therefore expected to accelerate the growing demand for improving Africa's air transport industry that has been for long liberalized. It will give the drive that is necessary to implement the provisions of the Yamsu Crow decision. Furthermore, the Commission undertakes research in the technical, economic, and regulatory aspects of air transport development in Africa. It encourages member states to comply with IKO standards. More importantly, it offers training programs and facilities in all fields of civil aviation. It is hoped fervently that our air transport sector will benefit immensely from such opportunities. Honorable Speaker, sir, with this brief, I move that this Honorable Assembly to move and ratify the revised constitution of the African Civil Aviation Commission. The member for Jimara constituency, Honorable Abibulai K. Jao, seconded the motion, highlighting the crucial role of air transport in economic development. Honorable Speaker, Africa Civil Aviation Commission aims to coordinate civil aviation matters in Africa and cooperate with IO, ICAO and all other relevant organizations and other bodies which are involved in the promotion and development of civil aviation in Africa. Honorable Speaker, therefore, I will urge my colleagues, not to hesitate, but to ratify this without any hesitation. His contribution followed a series of similar interventions from other honorable members, all pointing out the need to consider a motion centered on improving Africa's air transport sector. Honorable Speaker, if you look at the civil aviation in most African countries, you see to look at all the coordinations and the controls are done by other people outside Africa, whilst the transport itself is within Africa. So I think it's very important for us to take up our responsibilities as of now as Africans. I believe these are important, key important factors that, that we need, by looking at these conditions, we need to rectify this motion without any hesitation. Notwithstanding, if you go into the uh, uh, training aspect, the training component of the, uh, 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 of the, uh, of the constitution also states that the, the, it fosters an consolidated program for the development of training between facilities in Africa and to encourage and support the training of African development of the personals at the old field of air, civil air, air, air field of navigation. I think this training component is very important. If the civil aviation has the authority to benefit from this program, and so Gambia will have a long way to go, and will have to long, uh, uh, something to benefit from this uh, uh, association. Honorable Speaker, going to uh, Article 5 and 6, where members, member states will have equal opportunities and equal rights, in participation in all this has allayed our fears by saying there would not be any monopoly of the, the whole, whole commission sittings continue on monday 1st of july 2013 samuel ba grts the Food and Agriculture Organization Thursday handed over electronic equipment ranging from computers, laptops, printers, and digital cameras to the Horticultural Department of the Ministry of Agriculture. The donated materials are meant to facilitate the recently implemented National Horticulture Sector Master Plan. Babakar Sengal tells us more. Remains remains a vital contributor to the Gambia's economy. To improve this vital sector, the Ministry of Agriculture is constantly pushing to modernize the operations of the department. That Endeavour received a massive boost with the receipt of electronic equipment from the Food and Agriculture Organization. This is done in order to help expedite the newly implemented National Horticulture Sector Master Plan as a way of developing the horticultural sector. The National Horticulture Sector Master Plan is expected to provide a holistic value chain approach, focusing on women and youth farmers, so as to foster sustainable linkages with existing national regional and international markets for traditional horticulture production. It could be recalled that FAO has earlier donated vegetable seeds to the horticulture department for onward distribution to gardeners who were affected by the recent crop failure. The subsector is a very important in the socio-economic development of the country. It is perhaps the main source of 
income for most of the women farmers in the rural and peri-urban areas. As horticulture employs a large percentage of Gambians, especially women and youth, particularly those in rural and peri-urban areas, the master plan is also premised on developing the sector by improving livelihoods and ensuring food and nutritional security of Gambians, particularly vulnerable women and youth. The technical cooperation uh, program of the FAO, TCP, uh, as we all know, is meant to um, address, to, to generate catalytic action uh, at the level of the beneficiaries. And uh, so far in, in the Gambia, we have succeeded in making numerous interventions, not only in the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, but also in the, in the water resources, fisheries and forestry. Since the horticulture subsector continues to increase agricultural production and productivity, export expansion and diversification, increased income and household food and nutrition security of farmers and their families as envisaged in the Vision 2020 blueprint. The master plan will also assist stakeholders to develop all the necessary sector value chain to ensure poverty reduction. Given the recent clarion call by the President of the Republic for people to go back to the land, this latest development in the horticultural sector is seen as a boost for farmers and vegetable gardeners who are sitting anxiously in anticipation of the rain season. For Jartes News, this is Babukar Senghor. Three huge dump sites which lie uncomfortable on various strategic points in Bara have been cleared by the National Disaster Management Agency. The heap of waste have been a source of concern for people living in the area. And as Abdullah Baji tells us, it was after a presidential directive that officials of the National Disaster Management Agency mobilized heavy machinery to clear the waste. Earlier meeting convened by the Governing Council and a subsequent directive issued by President Jame instructing the National Disaster Management Agency and its partners to tour the country in a bid to discuss and sensitize regional authorities to concentrate and focus more on disaster preparedness and prevention in place of disaster response. It is against this backdrop that a team of NDMA officials, led by the acting executive director, traveled to the other side of the river with heavy machinery to rip the settlement of Barra, three massive dump sites, and construct waterways. Um, we are here today. Uh, with the caterpillars and uh, all our uh, workforce to make sure that that particular directive is executed to the latter. And uh, we hope that um, at the end of the, the three days that we hope to be here, we would be able to create the enabling environment for those living within this area to at least enjoy this time, this year's rains peacefully without no hitches. Uh, floods would not actually be a problem as far as they are concerned because the work we're supposed to do is not only to clear the, uh, the waste but also to create waterways, help create waterways whereby water could easily run down to the streams. The Governor North Bank Region Lamin Queen Jame commended President Jame for his foresight and his concern for the welfare of Gambians. For this, the President is sincerely thanked uh, for his commitment to the welfare of the Gambians particularly the people of Bara and Bara. Speaker after speaker reiterated government's commitment to the welfare of the citizenry while calling for more collaborative efforts to achieve their desired goals. The village development chairman, Lang Jangom, held the initiative adding that to maintain cleanliness in the area, efforts must be put in place to identify suitable areas and vehicles provided to collect waste. Waste management, according to the governor of North Bank region, is expensive while urging people to change attitude towards waste management. Uh, population pressure has shown us that the tendency of dropping things everywhere, littering everywhere, cannot sustainably continue. And being so, uh, we are duty bound to change. We must understand that we, it is not everywhere where we can throw litter. In fact, this is against the law, the anti-littering regulation. The acting director, National Disaster Management Agency, Challenge area council to identify dumping sites for the citizenry adding that people should desist from littering indiscriminately. And we being the people generating waste should also nurture the habit of managing waste because we are the generators, we should manage it. Instead, we do the opposite, that is generating waste, dumping it indiscriminately. We had just found somebody wanting to, to dump waste and with our intervention, he's turned his back. Hadinying, whose house sits very close to the dump site, 
expressed delight at the initiative taken by the NDMA.